So, happy Wednesday. How's everybody doing? Hey. Looks like games. Games, games, games. Oh, so close to 100%. Okay. Uh, that's all right. That's all right. Who did some problems since last week? We did a bunch of the, like, cool, cool. Yes, you did. Uh, who did this problem? You think you did this problem. Okay, so what's the answer? So the question is, can white connect? Right? Can white connect? So assuming white does connect, what happens? So who, so first of all, who, quick show of hands, who thinks white can connect and there's no problem? You do. You do, and you do. So it's a majority. <laughs> Well, it depends what you mean by I think that if it happened in a game, uh -huh. I wouldn't have even thought about it. Uh -huh. And the fact that you're asking the question uh -huh. means there's something really interesting. Well, I wanted to know who, who could read this. So this is 15 moves from here. So it's about 15 moves. So... Yeah, I hadn't, the answer, I haven't given, like, I hadn't even got to the cut directly It doesn't yet, work. So. Not to the cut directly. Yeah. What else would we do? Oh, Anything that isn't the cut directly fails almost immediately. Yeah. Well, so. I was trying to prove that to so. myself. Okay. Got it. Yeah, what was that? Yeah, this one. Is connected. There's not really I figured. Stuff in. Yeah, you figured. Why well, would just sacrifice the two stones? Right. Sacrifice the two stones. Yeah. Oh, well, that's. Black and not Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. So. Perhaps this is the more more interesting line to read out. What happens if white resists and tries to get everything? Hey, Eric. Andrew. All right. So to continue to resist and try and get everything, white's going to have to play here, right? We play here. It's over, right? So just got to try and play there. So who read this far? Who read this far? Nobody. <laughs> Did you? I mean, I was looking at it after you showed the cut. Did but. you? Anybody else? This is a contrived position just to show that the ladder works. We're assuming that these two stones are, like, it's bad for white to give these up. And in the case of, if this were actually the whole board, maybe that's not a big deal. So anybody who thought, oh, white was going to give up these two stones, partial credit because it's not actually a whole board problem. I just want to look to get a couple of them. Right. So who read to here? All right, I'll tell you what. We'll go back. Okay, so who read to there? <laughs> now do we see that that's the most plausible continuation so far? Right? Got it? Okay. So back we go. Into the breach. White has decided. White can do this. For the penny, you are in for the pound. But what happens now? Who wins the race in the corner? So everybody who thought that white could do this probably forgot about the important thing of having the stone here to begin with. So even if white tries to play here, Even if white, to play here, white has to first take the stone off before white can approach, right? Even if white tries to throw in, it's the same problem. White can't play here because these stones are all in Atari, right? This liberty was here, that throw in would work and the race would be over. But the cutting stone sets up the shortage which means that white now has to, well, against the throw in. There's three against three right now. No, white still wins. White just takes. I gave white two moves in a row. I gave white two moves in a row. Um, here, here, here. White here. Black will get the connection. Right. Right. So. Uh, if white could do this, then the throw in, if this liberty is not here, then white can throw in and make it work. But and right now, white can just Atari the three, three black stones. Uh, it's black's turn. Black connected. Oh. <laughs> so, so because when white plays here, black connects. Okay. Right? White throws in, black doesn't have to connect. Black can take the liberty. 
So I'm, I'm doing too many variations all at one go. So it's like this, black, white, black. Now it's white's turn. Doesn't matter what white tries here, black has an answer. Right, right. White here, okay. black here will work, right? Right. White throws in, and then plays here. Black has time to connect because of the short. Right. Right? He does have to respond to the throws. So, uh, right here, white throws in. You say I don't have to respond to that? Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we conclude white can't connect here. And the number of moves that we had to read was, depending on how you count, so these two are holding. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two more for the end of the race. A dozen moves. A dozen moves. Can we try and visualize the whole thing? Fun problem. Totally something that would happen in a real game. Right? You push, you cut, you decide if you're safe. If you've got a correspondence game, you've got all day to think about this stuff, right? You play on OGS. But uh, I think you should be able to visualize this in about. 20 seconds. Wow. Hang on, I'm gonna time myself. Yeah, Dan's impressed. And then the hard part is once you make the Hana here, having to remember this shape, right, when you come back to try and figure out how many of these I have. It's a neat problem. Okay, but what I wanted to talk about today, uh, last week we did a bunch more uh, Tsuji problems, life and death problems, uh, that were graded to sort of figure out what people's level was at. Two weeks before that we did middle game problems, two weeks before that we did more middle game problems. What we learned from the middle game problems is that we need to work on a middle game. So I thought, what should I do to help people work on a middle game? Well, a lot of the strategic, and tactic, strategic ideas about the middle game that are in attack and defense are sort of you know, principles and concepts, you know, junction lines and all that stuff. Uh, but what I wanted to talk about instead was proverbs, because a lot of that information is in proverbs. And I thought, actually, that a lot of it was in opening theory made easy. Uh, but I was a little mistaken. We'll get to that in a second. Um, what I realized actually was that there are, uh, I, I wanted to talk about different kinds of proverbs because not all of them are equally helpful. Specifically, two different kinds of proverbs, positive and negative. So negative proverbs are things like, don't push from behind, don't play near thickness, right? Positive proverbs, more like, you know, um, are things that suggest what you should do. So negative proverbs say, don't do this. Positive proverbs should say, do this, right? Everybody knows don't play near thickness, but that doesn't actually tell you where you should play, right? So the idea is that the difference between these two different types of proverbs, negative and positive, is that positive proverbs can help us, are actually useful if you remember them at the go board, right? Whereas negative proverbs sometimes are not as useful. So real quick, uh, quick list of the table of contents here in opening theory made easy. We look at the strategy at the end. Attack the opponent by stealing his base, positive. Don't attach against weak stones. Negative. Try to kill two birds with one stone. Positive. Use thickness to attack. Positive. Keep away from solid positions. Negative. Don't cling to stones that have served their purpose. Kind of negative, kind of positive. We'll come back to that one later. But the idea is that these strategic um, proverbs are more useful if they're positive. Tactical proverbs are a little bit more useful when they're negative. You know, uh, Hana at the head of two can direct, the tactical proverbs are also, it's a lot easier to take their converse. So if Hane at the head of two is a good tactical proverb, don't let yourself get Hane at the head of two is also a good tactical proverb, right? Um, don't push from behind, right? That's a very immediate, your stones are in contact, right? Very helpful sort of thing. Um, so another neat idea about uh, negative proverbs. When you're reviewing a game, negative proverbs will help you identify and understand bad moves as bad. Right? Don't push from behind. If you can find a place where you're doing that, now you know don't push from behind. 
On the other hand, it's a lot harder to find illustrations of that proverb in pro games because pros won't do it. So positive proverbs, if you're trying to understand positive proverbs, you can look at stronger players' games and see how their moves exhibit positive proverbs. Does that make sense? Does this kind of make sense what I'm saying? So there is a great list, the uh, 10 secret principles of Wei Qi, right? This uh, by Wang. I, I don't know, this is one of the ancient, the ancient ten proverbs, right? Have, you, have, you, have any of you guys heard these? The Chinese? Okay, so Sensei's Library, your homework, go check it out. Ten proverbs. You haven't, you, you haven't, oh, I have them right here, actually, so I'm going to go ahead. Uh, give up the small to save the big. If you want to take notes, this is a good time. Give up the small to save the big. Discard stones to get sente. Against strong positions, play safely. When attacking, take care of yourself. When invading, or when crossing the boundary, don't be in a hurry. Don't rush. That one's kind of new. Don't rush. But anyway, moves must respond and echo. Must respond or echo answer your opponent's moves. There's a bunch of fun translation issues. You can look these all up, and I encourage you to. Uh, make thick shape. Avoid rushing. Uh, when your stones are isolated and weak, look for peaceful options. Uh, when you're in danger, consider sacrificing. And the last one is kind of the most obvious proverb. Uh, greed doesn't get success. Show me an example of that one. I don't know. But these four positions here, these are four positions that uh, exhibit some of these proverbs. And if you guys wrote these down, I'll give you another list in a second. Um, what I'd like you to do is find examples of these proverbs in pro games tonight. So go through a pro game, find a sequence that exhibits these proverbs. I'll give you some examples. So right here. All right. Let's do the camera thing. This is going to make more sense with the camera. Anybody want to hear those ten proverbs? I, I want to protect it in some way. Sure, sure. Black to play. What's uh, what what's the group status? Is what are our ideas for for what we're going to do for direction? So we're looking for, at our middle game ideas. I want to attack these. You want to attack those. So which proverb do you think we're going to look at? Uh, for, don't rush. Protect yourself right. first. <laughs> right. When attacking, protect yourself first. And like you pointed out, this cut is kind of a thing. So the move suggested is this one. When attacking, first look to yourself, right? Also called don't go fishing when your house is on fire, right? Nice straightforward example there. And why here instead of here? Uh, this one has a bit more of an effect on this one. Okay. That's a great question. I mean, um, it's also just slightly higher up yeah. in terms of extent. Slightly higher yeah. in terms of making points this way. This would be make moves with more than one meeting. Right? Kill two birds with this stone. Hey, look at that. Look at this. Yeah, more than the same example. That's right. <laughs> Who the fuck? All right, actually, there's one of those here too. So this one is white to play. So let's think about what white would do here. What is the area of the board that our eyes are looking for? Looking at the one white stone. The one white stone. One white stone. Frank, you were pointing at this one? I was pointing in here, yeah, yeah. just because that seems like Wax getting ready to turn it into a giant moya. So I could probably talk about like a lot of these proverbs in a lot more depth than just sort of like leading them immediately. Like the one, um, uh, when entering the opponent's territory, don't be, be unhurried. Sort of the translation of that kind of suggests uh, that you shouldn't, uh, that hurry, in this case, means being thin. When you play fast, you leave yourself thin everywhere. So like the other one, uh, make thick shape, avoid rushing. means like avoid trying to keep sente all the time, right? That it's useful to make thick shape, right? Rather than trying to be thin and fast everywhere. Mm -hmm. Avoid rushing and being too Aren't speedy. those like two different styles? Uh, there's styles, but there's also like a time for everything. So to start another group over here for white, it's a bad idea. They'll have two weak groups. Oh, uh, right. Right? Uh, He'll have... It, by rushing from one to the other, it's going to be kind of thin, right? So we're kind of being in a hurry by being in a hurry to play in both places. Also, um, there's this is open at the bottom, uh, so this isn't really uh, in a in a hurry here. Okay. Like you said, the white group here, the white stone here, is the area that we're interested in. So black wants or white wants to move this out. How do we do it? What is the best way? What was that? I say lean on the enclosure. Lean on the enclosure, how? That's 
<laughs> this is probably the hardest proverb to find a good This one? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm thinking up shoulder. here. Yeah, one of these yeah, two. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. So in this case, the moves that the pros do are this one. He probes in here. Wow, I wasn't far off. And then jumps. Now, what proverb do you think this one is exhibiting? It would probably help if I gave you guys all of this, but I don't do handouts, sorry. Only hands up. Okay, so, so why do we do this? Why do we do this probe? And then why do we not just jump immediately? Oh, this is sacrifice something small to get something big. No. No. Sacrifice something small to save the big. Mm. It's a slightly. I also heard it when you're being chased, drop your luggage. That is not <laughs> like um, cut off the tail. Not cut, cut off the, off the tail. tail. That's right. That's right. Exactly. The lizard. But the lizard. <laughs> anyway, the idea. This one is the idea that your moves must echo or respond to your opponents. You play this probing move. When white, black responds this way, black is saying the outside is important. So once black has said the outside is important, then white decides to just jump in. Fun, so, right? Suppose black had replied differently. Try and take the corner. Um, so if black replies to take the corner, white has other options depending on that. There's a ton of variations to this right here. Um, uh, Sakata Eo is the middle game of Go, which is actually right there should properly be titled Dealing with This Invasion. Um, there's a bunch of great examples in there. There's a lot of diagrams in that book that I recommend it. The other one, uh, Invading and Reducing Territorial Frameworks, also on that book case, also covers this position extensively. Lots of options. Suffice to say, in this board position, black's moves are not wrong. Right? Like, this isn't necessarily bad for black, what happened here. Mm -hmm. This is a pro game. Like, this is okay. Right? But the point is that this is still, um, it, this stays in a balanced way. Like, this is the right timing to do this, and this correctly answers that. Probably one of the harder problems, but a really great example. So if you're looking for a pro game, this is like kind of one of those examples that moves should echo each other, right? All right, Dan, come your way. All right, this one here. Okay, this is another hard one to look at. Oh, so who recognizes this Joseki? Who recognizes this Joseki? Because I know we covered it oh, a few weeks ago. That's, I do. Yeah, what position? Two space high. Two space high, that's right, with the three, three invasion. Right, four, four, right. low nice move approach, two Ooh. space high, venture, so, jumps in the corner. This? I don't know, somebody drop the pencil. Whose turn? Oh, Black's turn. One. Yeah, the one it's that's a yellow. Yeah, that's somewhere here. Somewhere block. in there. Okay. So. Uh, yeah, that is a big area. I don't know. I haven't tried it, but this is a big area. I recommend it. Right. Something about that. This one. So in this case, uh, be unhurried when your opponent rushes in. So let's let's look at what happens first. This one, which looks like it's really deep, and it looks like we're we are uh, when in when attacking. You know, first take care of yourself. That's not really this one either because we're not attacking. Be unhurried when crossing the boundary. That's kind of this one, but the important thing about this one is is that there's a weakness here that White's aiming at. That's the most important reason why this is not too deep. Okay, so the next three moves are, are kind of illustrative. He says throwing stones around the board. The next three moves. So next, so how's black going to answer this? White's just pushed up. What do you think? All right, jump. Right, pushing here might make a heavy shape. We're going to jump. Right. White's next move is here, securing that connection, sort of shoring up that weak point. Right. What's Black's next move? Tiger mouth. No. Oh, Connect. jumping again. All right? This, this is that idea of um, being unhurried about reducing the opponent's territory. You see this often in a lot of uh, Haley's games, where she's not in as much of a hurry to invade as a lot of people otherwise would, right? In this case, 
This is okay. We can give this guy up, right? Um, I am. Oh, these stones aren't on the board yet. It looks <laughs> like looks like this, I believe. After this and this, after this exchange, Black jumps again. Right? Just playing very, very light, flexibly. You know, we're not in a hurry to reduce everything, and we're also you know, making sure that, that this is a good flexible shape. This is a great example of that not being in a hurry uh, to cross the boundary. We're not rushing and leading ourselves thin. We're gonna go ahead and jump away. Does that make sense? Does that, what I'm getting to kind of make sense? Aren't yes, there maybe. situations where you can wait too long and then all of a sudden you lost your chance? Totally. But which one's, which situation is that? What's the best time to invade a Moya? Oh, right before. Right before complete. it can turn into territory yeah. with one move. Right. Okay. All right. This one here. This one is actually maybe the easiest one of the problems that we were talking about. Yeah, I'll get there. This is also sometimes called patient moves. Right? Patient moves. Right. right side. Okay, so what are some moves we're looking at? Which ones? <laughs> What's turning it? That one there, the nice move. Black move. Uh, so do you like this one? Yeah. Something over here. Something over here where we're going to push this way? Hmm. Black's play is this one. I was just about to say they, this one threatened to connect underneath and, and make, start to make a base. It's an initial, you can be pushed pretty low by white playing here. The, the other thing that you could think about is this here. Like was, These stones will all be connected, but this is a really thick position, yeah. right? And the idea here is that just by doing this, in the face of uh, a strong position, you know, seek peace. So it's not playing too close to thickness. Against strong positions, play safely. Yeah, we're trying not to like throw this stone into the egg here. So throw, throw eggs against the wall, right? This, these, these points here could really hurt, right? Instead, by doing this, we're practically alive, right? At this point, it's it's mm -hmm. it would be very alive. Also, we're sort of getting ready to if we want to come through and cut here. Just cutting this way, by the way. Like this stone, it's not important yet. Right, like you're not making necessarily a big territory this way. So cutting this way, right, might not actually get you anything, right? Good thought though. So this I thought was a great example of the whole, you know, when you're in danger, when you're in, against thick positions, play, play thickly, play safe. Sorry. So what do you think? Do you think if you, I turn you guys loose on the pro game collection, you'll be able to turn up examples of these positive proverbs in their games? Or, alternately, you could look for examples of negative proverbs in reviewing your own games, which sounds like more fun. Your homework, should you choose to accept it, is to review your games and find some of the negative proverbs. I'll send out a whole list of them tonight. Type them all. I had a bunch of the negative proverbs. Most of them were negative. Don't push from behind, don't play in the thickness, don't attach to weak stones. Don't Atari automatically. Don't peep where you can cut. Don't defend the territory that's open on both sides. Don't push on the second line. You know, like, those don't actually help you where to play, right? So these 10, these 10 other principles are much more strategic. Ideas. They so, illuminate once you've already made yeah. a mistake, right? So. All right, let's try it. Cool. You guys can work together.